tamu sana tamu sana yes tamu sana earlier today the Oka team were in Kiambu county where they were also accompanied by William Kabogo for some campaigns there but that's an analysis we'll do later on in this youtube channel so in this video ladies and gentlemen i want us to have a look at a speech or rather some remarks Kalonzo and Gilu gave out yesterday during a function or a ceremony in Ukambani yesterday. After which, as usual, we are just going to dissect those remarks to see exactly what they mean politically. So if in case you've just bumped here for the very first time, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Give it a like, please. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Listen into this. We as a country, we as a nation, we are a nation to say there to India for Uongozi by Jew. Pesa yote ya Jew inakaa huko, hakuna mmoja wetu anapata hapa. Kutukae chini na wewe, kutuoneshe this is how we are going to do it. And you know, if I hold you by my hand, and all others, you are not going to miss a good seat. We have time enough. She and the Papa Kunawato are the answer to the year 2022 in 2013. We still have a need eight months. Kumukeni in 2017. Mimi and Zaku to Raila and Bebe Bendera and Nasa. In April, April the Rishirini in 2017, Sasha, we are even in December 2021. There's work to be done. Yes. That's Charity Ngilu and Kalonzo Musioka yesterday in Ukambani. And from the way Charity Ngilu is actually talking, she seems to be giving Kalonzo some words of advice after which Kalonzo just comes out to respond. Yes, that's what I'm drawing from that speech. And I strongly believe, ladies and gentlemen, listening to Charity Ngilu and then listening to Kalonzo Musioka responding, those two leaders' remarks carries a lot of political weight that I just want us to find out. That's going to form the basis of our analysis and discussion today. Yes. I've summarized the points into five for you and me to understand one another better here. The first meaning or the message that comes out clearly from those two leaders' speeches is that Ngilu is torn between two worlds. Ngilu wants a situation where come next year's election, she will be part of the national government. And Ngilu believes that Raila Molo Odinga most likely will form that next national government. On the same side, or rather, on the same note, Charity Ngilu also believes that Kalondo Musioka's wave is averagely strong in Hakitui County. So Charity Ngilu does not want a situation that occurred in 2017. Even though Charity Ngilu beat wiper candidates in 2017 gubernatorial race, she may be, she's, not, she's reluctant to go all that route. Because, because it was a hard-fought kind of a battle. And by Kalonzo working together with Raila Molo Odinga, Ngilu believes that she will be part of the next government, national government, and also her re-election as Kitui governor will be a lot more easier as opposed to a situation where Kalonzo is on the other side and then she's forced mm, to brave the Kalonzo wave in Kitui County. I tend to believe that's maybe what Charity Ngilu is trying to do. She's trying to bring these two leaders together so that she can be part of the national government and at the same time, she can easily win back or rather win a re-election as the Kitui governor come next year. That's one thing maybe Charity Ngilu is trying to do in this case here. And then secondly, we all know Charity Ngilu as a seasoned politician. In fact, Charity Ngilu contested for the presidency even before Kalonzo. She was the first to contest for the presidency. And we saw a good percentage, if not 90% or rather over 90% of the 
of Kaba's Vote for Charity Ngilu. That was way back in 1997. So Ngilu has the political experience. And not only the political experience, Ngilu has also come out to be a master of also crafting and building coalition. She has got a way of bringing leaders together to form the next government. And that's something you saw in the year 2002 when Charity Ngilu, Mike Ibaki, and Michael Kijana Wamalwa came together, they formed a, a NAK, after which they merged together with LDP to form NAC, the Rainbow Coalition. So maybe Ngilu is trying to do the same thing here. She's just trying to be, bring on board all top leaders so that they can pull something similar to what they did in the year 2002. I tend to believe also that's what Charity Ngilu is just trying to do in this case here. She just wants to bring leaders together so that they can form a super coalition, something similar to what they did in the year 2002. That's also something that comes out clearly. And then thirdly, Kalonzo on her part is not ruling out the possibility of actually working with Raila Morodina. But Kalonzo's problem, he, he feels that it's still too early for that or rather for him to announce that now he's officially supporting Raila Molo Odinga, or is now officially working with Raila Molo Odinga. And likely that is because Kalonzo, from his body language and even from the way Kalonzo talks, Kalonzo believes that in Kenya, elections are decided eh, only about three or two months to the election itself. So Kalonzo is still dilly darling because maybe according to him, he believes that there might be some other realignments or some kind of surpluses that can just be maybe favorable to him. Kalonzo believes that maybe there, be, there can be some realignments that can just have him as a presidential candidate. So that's why most likely Kalonzo also is still buying time. Mm. She believes that maybe things can just happen and then she can, he, can, he believes that things can just happen and he can just find himself being supported for the presidency. That's also something I'm drawing for those two leaders speaking. And then fourthly, it also exposes the behavior of young leaders who are hanging on Kalonzo's court for a re-election against all seasoned politicians, the likes of Ngilu. You know, these younger leaders, or these first-time elected leaders, they strongly believe the likes of Wambua, it is senator. They believe that by telling Kalonzo or championing for a Kalonzo Musioka presidency, then they will be relevant or they will use that to remain relevant in their areas, eh, in their constituencies or in their counties. And Enoch Wambua has really been doing that. And we have seen largely first-time leaders or elected leaders, they seem to be hanging on the course of these political kingpins. But now Ngilu, is just trying to tell Kalonzo in broad daylight that such kind of leaders might be misleading Kalonzo and that they just want to hang on Kalonzo's court maybe for a re-election. Somebody like Charity Ngilu does not need to hang on Kalonzo's, Kalonzo Musioka's court to be re-elected. Charity Ngilu has proved herself nationally and also regionally in terms politically, I mean. So Ngilu is just trying to expose to Kalonzo to be wary of such kind of leaders who just want to push Kalonzo, even though Kalonzo will not make it as the president, for them, they, they, they'll use maybe the Kalonzo way to get re-elected. That's what maybe Ngilu is also that just trying to tell Kalonzo Musioka. And then finally, this whole thing also just exposes the indecisiveness of Kalonzo Musioka again. Yes, an indication that from behind the scenes, talks with Raila's team are still inconclusive. It's a given fact, ladies and gentlemen, and Kalonzo Musioka's team, they have also come out to confirm that actually their team and Raila's team are in secret talks. That's something that is now in the public domain. But from the way Kalonzo is behaving, and even today they were in Kiambuan, from the way they were talking, it seems to appear that the talks are still inconclusive. So Kalonzo Musioka here is still beating about the bush.
He still, he still seems to be undecided on which direction to go. And that's, that also just exposes to us that the talks, behind the scene talks, are still unconclusive. That's what I'm drawing from Ngilu and Kalonzo's remarks yesterday in Ukambani. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, just as I did indicate when we were starting, if you've just bumped here for the very first time, very first time, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Give it a like, please. Give it a like. And to those who are watching us outside Kenya for the very, very first time, if you are watching us outside Kenya for the very first time, kindly drop a comment. Let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. Drop a comment, please. And then to our fans here and subscribers, I'm very much humbled, very much grateful for the kind of support you are giving me here by constantly giving our videos likes constantly dropping your comments. God bless you. God bless Kenya. And to any other person, that's the kind of analysis we do here. We don't beat about the bush. We hit the nail straight to the head. We call it as it is. So if in case you are also a fan of us here, but you have not yet subscribed, take this opportunity today, tap on the subscription button and also on the notification bell to receive a notification anytime we upload a new video. And if possible also, kindly drop a comment and also give this video a like. Give it a like please. Thank you, God bless you, God bless Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana yes.